was open. So yeah, yeah, mom. What is up, Internet? I'm live with Mr. Bill Potter from Fort Payne. Five. Five, Alabama, from Five, Alabama. Now, so I thought, now, we're just going to go ahead and get into it. I thought you were from Fort Payne. No, I'm from Five. Okay, when did you move or you've always been I always Five? lived there. Okay, so how, do you, how, do you, how did you end up getting so much to do with the, uh, the uh, how do you say it, the uh, Opry House in Fort Payne? Oh, well, that's, that's a production of the Landmarks, and I was invited to take part of that because I run the DeKalb County, Alabama Historical Group on Facebook. Okay, so what is that? What's the DeKalb County Historical Group? It's dedicated to just the entire history of uh, Fort Payne and the county as a whole. Uh, pictures, newspaper articles, stories, everything from back the foundation of the county all, all the way up into the recent past. I got you. That's very cool. So how did you, uh, you started the page and then they invited you? They did. They invited me down. So Ori we're about, go ahead, go. Originally they, Robin Black had asked me to come down to the auditions and I didn't want to do it because I'm, I'm not good on stage. I'm not, good. Oh, no. I'm not good in, in front of microphones. I got you. And she said, well, all you're going to have to do is just come on between acts and read, you know, historical, uh, stories, tell historical stories, you know, something like that was the original plan. And I went down there and I watched everybody act and what they, they were doing improv. Yeah. And I thought, Hey, I can do improv. Okay. So I ended up being an actor instead of a, instead of a historian. Now that that's cool. I think so. Well, how did you get into the history of Fort Payne? What brought that about? It's oh, just... I've, I've always been interested in that. Okay. Oh, well... I've, I've always been interested in history in general and, and specifically history of the County. Um, when I was a kid, there was a guy named John Chambers, and John wrote a weekly article for the Times Journal back in the 80s. I got you. Keep going. Keep going. Each article <laughs> was something different. It was either an old newspaper article from the area or just some historical fact. And I was I just absolutely loved his column. And that got me into local history big time. And uh, I haven't stopped. I've, all, I've always been super interested. In it. So did you ever meet that guy? Talk to him on the phone. I never met John in person, but I had numerous telephone conversations with him. Does he know how much of an impact he had kind of on your life? And he, he's no longer with us. He passed away several years ago. Did he know? I wouldn't think so. You'd, you'd hope he did. I would hope little. that he did. Yeah, but right. he, he, he was kind enough to, to talk to a teenager on the phone, you know, which is. That's cool, you know, man. nice of him. A lot of people don't do that. A lot no, of people don't no, do he, that. He was a super, super nice, super knowledgeable that's a that's very cool i think that's a very cool thing that he done i think it's awesome that he took the time to speak to you and just the fact that ev everyone's got things that they do well and then once you find and then they love to do more importantly things that they love to do mm -hmm. and if somebody kind of pushes that along a little bit i like yes. that man i think that's really cool so uh so when they called you how old were you how many years ago was it when they called you to come up uh, to the opera yeah oh it was uh this spring so i was the same age i am now it was just this spring yeah, just this spring I feel like you've been doing that forever <laughs> no no i've been doing the i've been doing the historical group for about four years okay now and, i have seen that a lot um, yeah i've been doing it about four years we're, we're up to a little over seventeen thousand members now that's awesome now, and, but no the the opera just started this year it, it's something new that okay. landmarks came up with and we're going to try to do it every year i, I have every intent of uh, trying out again next year if if uh, I didn't run everybody off with my performances this go around. So talking about that, I think you just got you got slammed pretty good, no? I did, I did. I had to wrestle in the last. All night. right. So yeah. tell us a little bit about what 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 y'all had going on. Uh, it was this past Saturday. It was this past Saturday. We've had a, a saga. It's called the Jolene Saga, and I play a character called Little Cecil, Little Cecil Panky, who is from Rodentown. I got you. I got you. And uh, he proposed to a young lady at the June jam in the, in the production. And uh, then it turns out that he was still married to his fourth wife. Oh, so and, uh, it all came down to a big gospel thing and wrestling match at the first self-righteous church. And uh, yeah, first self and of course I, I was the heel. <laughs> okay. The first self-righteous church. I, I yes. like that. How'd y'all come up with that? That's Robin Black. That's Robin Black. That's Robin Black. All, all right, Black. I got you, man. That's pretty cool. Now, I, I, I was wondering what was going on when I seen it. Now, my dad loves pro wrestling. That's what mm -hmm. my dad's always done. He's always been around it. He's always loved pro wrestling. And uh, when I seen it, that was the first thing I, I thought of. Because, like, the way y'all did it, you know, you you, 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 you spray-painted the, the, the plywood uh, wrestling match with gospel singing to yeah. follow. Yeah, Cassie Wigley did that. That was her artwork. Now, you know that that really happens, though. Yeah, she based that off of a real sign. 
Okay. Someone had found a picture of a real hand painted sign for a gospel. Probably in Rome, day. Georgia. Probably. Yeah. Or possibly even Gunnersville. There, there was one in Gunnersville. And on. Cassie did that. I got gotcha. you. You're on no smoking in Alabama Grapevine. How can I help you? Listen, I'm telling you what, that sounds like Cecil. And oh, no. I'm going to need him to pony up because he owes me a ton of retribution. I am owed at least thirty-seven dollars for half the gas I spent. And, look, look, Tammy Lynn, you're, and, you're, you're you were supposed to have moved to Boaz and never came back. That was the deal. Listen, listen, it's kind of like you know, rumor on the street after talking to Joe Lane and heebie jeebity they just keep coming back. You know, so I just, I just show up unexpectedly, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of like so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting over to being hit in the face with a cake. I mean, you can just go to Boaz and stay there. It's better than a couple other things you've been hit in the face with. This is know. true. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm going to need that, and I need it in $2 bills, crisp $2 bills. I don't want them to have been circulated. you got to go down to the Regions Bank, and I need that money, that gas money, uh, you know, I, I need that as, as soon as possible. And also, Patrick Swayze down here, he's he been waiting for his uh, pate. So I need you to get on that. I'll, it's on it. I'm on I'm on it right now. What do you owe her $37 for? I told you, and it's leftover gas money. Leftover gas, gas from hitting me in the face. Son. Well, man, all right. Well, thank you so much for calling, and then we hope to hear from you again. That was awesome. Oh, well, <laughs> they just doing the those, Lord's work down here in the Boaz. Bills. Just doing the Lord's work. Yes, ma'am. What do y'all do down in Boaz? And it's some of it's a little bit I can't talk about. Some <laughs> of it's we can't talk about. Some of it I'm sourcing. Listen, I'm getting into this thing about some, something with them crystals, and I'm so outsourcing these crystals because that rumor on the street is if you done rub some of these magical crystals, it'll make your hair shiny and it'll make your your eyelashes grow and something about your heart. And I don't. I, I was. I stopped paying attention. But, what, what does it? I, do, what does it do if you smoke one of them on a pickle jar lid? Well, you'd be the only one who'd know the answer to that one. That's, 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 something, that's something a little bit above my expertise now. I can't can't be talking about none of that now. You'd have to be the one to give that answer there, little Cecil. Little Cecil. You're Cecil? Cecil. I play Cecil. You are Cecil. Though. I'm not Cecil. I am Cecil. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. That's a terrible. Lil. Lil you got to make sure you, you got to sure say Lil Cecil. Lil Cecil. Lil Cecil. Lil Cecil. You can't just say Cecil. No, you got to say Lil Cecil. I think there's more to this than just the gas money. I think you've angered this lady. Probably. I think I think maybe unrequited love or maybe 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 y'all are related and she's angry that you haven't covered her gas money, man. Something's going on here. Checks in the mail. Maybe, maybe if he didn't try to uh, leave me, uh, this wouldn't have been a problem. But, you know, that's all right. That's all right. Unrequited love. All right. I see it, man. Well, uh, ma'am, if there's if there's ever a time you need to call in again, you holler at us. We appreciate you. You know I will. Yes, ma'am. You know it. <laughs> you have a great day. Mm, I'm trying, buddy. I'm trying. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. All right. Love you. And- Bye. 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 That was awesome. That was terrifying. Uh, I'd be careful driving home. That's part of the saga. Oh, so that was acting. That's one of the actors. I'm going to say that's probably not an act. That lady sounded angry. She stays angry. Okay. She right. lives angry. <laughs> now, Harper Brown is on here. Do you know her? I do. I don't know Harper, but she said give her those $2 bills. And then she said, that's your ex. She's right on both. I was pretty close on the money there. You are. I was pretty close on the money, man. Uh, so y'all do things like that all the time at the uh, Opera House. Yeah, now, we you did. said that just started this year? Started this spring. This okay. production I, started this spring. And we hope for it to be ongoing. You know, I, I'd love to do it again next year. I you should. Love it. You should. So, like, there's not really a lot to do around here. No. At Almost at all. <laughs> there isn't. So y'all, y'all do that. Y'all are also doing music there now, right? At the Opera oh, yeah. House? Yeah, all kinds. Of, there's all types of programs going on there. Yeah, tell us about tell us about, Go ahead. Yeah, you're fine. No rush. We're good. We got There's hour. a Christmas program coming up, but I don't really know the details of it. Okay. It, and uh, that throw in Appalachia was the music. Yeah, I seen that. Was the music. And unfortunately, I was so tired, I didn't make that. Oh, man. Now, I don't know everybody that y'all have had on throwing Appalachia. Mm-hmm. Now, why'd y'all name it throwing Appalachia? Shannon Smith named it that. It's 
it's uh, it's a pun on Apple Atcha and Appalachia. Yeah. Now, uh, one guy that y'all did have on there was Logan Graves. Yes. And I've had Logan Graves on here. What, oh, okay. What do you think about Logan? His music was good. I'd never, um, I'd never, I'd never met him before. I'd never heard him before. But I, I was impressed with his with his stuff. I think, uh, I think he's got some real natural talent on him. I think mm -hmm. his, I think, I think he's had to work pretty hard too to get at it. But as far as hearing him sing, uh, I've heard him. Uh, Marcus Spurlock and I've heard uh, uh, Credence Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, all three of them, and I've heard them all right here. Uh, we were sitting in chairs at the time, recliners. But those three guys hearing them sing live, you're like, well, wait a minute, you got something pretty good going, and there's not mm -hmm. really a platform for things like that around here. Not really, but we're we're trying to change that. You guys, and landmarks, man. landmarks is trying to change that, you know, because we've uh, we've had a lot of local acts, you know, perform during the opera, you know, because there's music, and then the the yeah. comedy skits are in between. And it, you know, just try to give a platform to everybody. Well, I'm going to start coming out to some you of should. those because I've never met you. I didn't know that you were a nice guy, Bill. Well, I appreciate it. I, I didn't know you. And, and some people would disagree with that. You seem nice to me. Thank right? you. You seem nice to me. Now, uh, uh, I, I met you through the grapevine mm -hmm. on the Alabama grapevine. What? And this is a kind of hard question because, like, we're here together. What are your thoughts on the grapevine? I like it, but then again, I like scandal. Okay. I like scandal. Um, do you think? Got, do you think it's all scandal? No, it's not all scandal, okay. but there's enough, and, there's pe enough. and people crave <laughs> scandal. And if you'll go back and read, say a newspaper, say go get the Fort Payne Journal from 1896. It's not going to be uh, this. We're going to read this over dinner that that we get from the legacy media nowadays, or from the mainstream media, or for, from any media. It was scandal, it was scandal after scandal. And uh, that's why people loved it, because in those days there was no television. There was no movies. Uh, there was no Internet. So all of your entertainment had to come from your hometown newspaper. And what better way to be entertained than just be totally shocked? I agree. Um, I, and I appreciate the honesty. Uh, a lot of it. it how do you say it? Uh, <clears throat> that was a good answer, Bill. I didn't Thank know. You. You're a nice guy and honest. <laughs> Uh, there is some, uh, uh, what was the word again? Uh, controversy. It was a better word. It was a harder, harder cutting word. Tabloid. No, the word you said a minute ago, contra not controversy. You said, uh, well, anyway, it was a bigger word than controversy. And, uh, I try not to make it all controversy. I do like for it to be some positive for the people and stuff. With that being said, I also feel like there's a lot of stuff that people around here, like, don't try to talk about. And like mm -hmm. they just kind of sweep it under the rug. And like it's not necessarily that I want it. I'd almost rather it never happened. Mm -hmm. Some of it, right? Like yeah. I, I think all I'm not a blue line guy. Mm -hmm. I love the police that are good and really working for the community. I yeah. love politicians that are really good and working for the community. Mm -hmm. I love preachers that are really good and, and want to help people get to heaven. Where my problem comes in is where it's like, well, you did something really bad. Right. And when if it had it been someone else, we'd have never heard about it. And so like anything that mm -hmm. does happen and it's not getting touched on, I feel like should. And then like a, I feel like also there's people around here that like me, uh, not like me, but are like me. And, and maybe they don't really have any kind of platform at all for their story to get told, whether mm -hmm. it is something uh, scandalous or just, hey, man, like Logan. I think Logan and Marcus and Credence should have a much bigger following than they get and a lot more uh, pomp and bam fanfare behind them and yeah. I, I think that's something important that we try to do and uh i appreciate that honesty bill that's cool man i hit you with a hard one but you was like no that's good this is the way yeah, it is, that's how it is. <laughs> so it's, uh, like, it's like a friend of mine said he said we live in the time where everybody has their own newspaper yes, everybody has their own platform every idiot has their own yes they platform. do i'm an idiot i've got a platform with seventeen thousand people you, you know? got 17 17 000. So, i'm playing catch up brother I'm playing catch up. But Keep yeah, we, going. Yeah, go 17. And and that's a good thing. I mean, it's it's like the democracy of the masses. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think uh, I think debate should always be open. I think if you have a thought, you should be able to put it out. And the beautiful thing about Facebook, mm -hmm. the beautiful thing, it's free, brother. Exactly. It's, it's free. Exactly. I started a. I did a fight show for a little while around here. All the advertising majority, all the legwork, Facebook. Uh -huh. word of mouth man you know what it cost me nothing to, to do that yeah. to at least to do that that was nothing and it was mm -hmm. just like dude and, and people use it for businesses it's yes. good for local businesses yes, i mean is. you're always and i do it myself you know yes sir my yes, work sir. and uh it, it's great 
I, yes. I, I love it. I love social media. I know everybody's afraid of social media and it's cool to be scared of social media, but I'm yeah. not scared of it. If you're not the way I see it, if no, so, so one thing I don't want to do ever, and there's a reason I don't want to ruin anybody's life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make their lives bad. I don't want to do that. Um, but there are certain things that have to be put out. I don't want to ruin anybody's life. What people do with their sex life, what people do at home, what people do, whether they're drinking and stuff like that, that's, mm -hmm. that's your business, man. Now, if you're out drinking and driving, that's not your business. That's our business. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but then where I see a problem is once it becomes a, a, like if you're a politician, though, and you're doing something that's not good for your area, well, that's so much different. Because, like, mm -hmm. if you're a politician and you cheat on your wife, or you're a politician and you tie one on at the local bar, and make a fool of yourself, that don't affect me, mm -hmm. right? Really, it doesn't. But if you get out and do something else that doesn't help the people, right, yeah. that does start to affect me. Because I'm I'm poor. By uh, Almost everyone around here is a measure of that. And and I do want a fair shake, and I want my family to have a fair shake, the same as anyone else gets to try to make their life really good. And uh, I just think it's so important that we're all treated the same. We do see a lot of people in, in the papers for, you know, math and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's kind of harder to see people for other stuff. And it's like, well, man, what are, we, what are we doing? Those people have a problem. Do I agree with math? No, 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 it's terrible. But I have so many friends and stuff. Uh, not so many friends, but I have a ton of friends that have, got sick you know went through that not through color code color code never helped them mm -hmm. but they went through a place called his place in opalaca alabama and man but but before they got to go through that program man it was put all over there like hey this guy's a dope head this guy's a billet and then mm -hmm. the rest of their life they're just not the rest of their life but for a long time man they're just called a dope head that's because it's easier to do a drug bust than it is to solve a, a burglary mm -hmm. or to solve a car theft or murder or to solve a murder okay it's easy uh if you want your record to look really good, oh, I've I've I so I've done all cases. these. Yeah, I've got a thousand cases. I've found a thousand meth heads. Well, that you know that'd be that'd be like me finding ten grapes in a bag of grapes. <laughs> <laughs> but solving a murder or a car theft or uh -huh. a burglary, that's, that's a different game. You you've got to actually get out and do a little homework. Me and you are more alike than than we think, brother. That was cool. That was a cool thing I heard you say. So uh, you you said earlier throw an apple at you. Who uh, and that's the Opera House. But who yeah. is the group that you said plans those? Oh, uh, Shannon Smith was the one that, that came up with that idea and no, was no, in no. charge of it. No, there's oh a, the landmarks. Yeah, landmarks now what is the landmarks? Landmarks. It's a historical society. It's a nonprofit. It was founded in 1969, and I can't read the entire <laughs> thing, Harper, because uh, I don't have a script in front of me. But it, it was founded in. <laughs> 1969 and what the deal was they were trying to save the opera house they were trying to save the depot because back in 64 um the what people call the rainy hotel that was really originally the the keely institute it was it was built in, in 1889 it was the keely institute and it was uh it was a uh, drug and alcohol rehab facility a, a type of hospital and in it later uh, Mr. Rainey turned it into a hotel and it was a beautiful, beautiful historic building. Well, it got bulldozed and a gas station put there and that, uh, that, I opened, guess, that, right? yeah, that opened <laughs> people's eyes. And so, uh, a lot of local of the local people said, Hey, you know, we need to save some of these buildings. Yeah. And that's when landmarks was formed and it's a nonprofit. They own the opera house and, uh, they own the block, the opera block there that's and cool. the Kelsey bluff school. They own a, own a lot of historical structures and, their entire their their only goal is to is to protect and preserve the history and uh, the buildings themselves. Like with the Opry, the profits are all going for a, a fire protection, a sprinkler system for okay. the Opera House. I think that I think that's so cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I assumed right. Mm -hmm. Someone was making a lot of money on those places. No. All right. No, no, no. It, this, it, it, it's all for. Uh, I, got I wouldn't you. say charity because I would never say an ancient building is charity but it's all for the preservation of, of i got history. you because how old is the opera house yeah how old is it 1889 it okay. was it was built in 1889 and the first uh, production took place in 1890 that's 150 years almost almost right 135 yeah i'm rounding years. up yeah. i'm rounding up you ain't gotta but, be like that Bill. but it, it was <laughs> it was the first uh, movie theater in dekalb county it switched over from uh, stage productions to uh, silent movies in 1916. That's and, so cool. And it was uh, the theater until 1935 when the DeKalb opened. I didn't know that. That's very cool. So that whole strip, I think, is a beautiful little strip. It is. It's a beautiful town. And this is, beautiful. this is a, 
is a hard another hard question. How do you say it? We were talking before. There's not a lot to do here. Y'all are changing that. Y'all are we're trying. Y'all are bringing we're, stuff we're in. We're trying. Do you want it to be? You don't want it to be like downtown Nashville, right? What do? You, what's the long? What? How do you say it? What do you think? Because that area right there, there's so many mm-hmm. places. There's so many buildings. There's so many. Stop by, have your beer. Stop by, listen to some music. Stop by, do this. That place should yeah. be bumping all the time. What do you think the long term goal should be for that? that little area well just what you said you know just to keep it moving you know to keep keep it from being a dead downtown yes when you look back and you and uh, you realize that there was more going on in 1934 than in 2024 you know you want to at least come up to 1934 standards yes yes and and there was a lot going on back in those days it was jamming man. it it was jamming such a pretty place man Mm -hmm. i don't think everybody probably wants it to be like that but I, i can almost guarantee that the people that own the local restaurants there I know they don't want it to be like Nashville, but I know also that like you're a local restaurant. The best thing for you would be people to have a couple of beers yeah. and then come to your place and eat your food. Exactly. Or just some 21 and year old. The boom, the boom days themselves, you know, the boom days are coming up and that that's a great event. How many people come through on boom days? Oh Lord, I don't know. More than I can count. It's a lot of people. You know, more than I can count. And uh, I've, you know, I've actually, I don't think I've ever been, I went one time and I just in and out to see SEMA, yeah. uh, 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 Ryan Chambliss. He's always been very polite to me. A nice guy. So uh, we're, we're on that. We're, I know we're jumping around a little bit. Tell us a little bit about the history of Fort Payne. How was it formed? Why is it called Fort Payne? It was Let's called start with Fort, that. Well, Fort Payne, you know, was a stockade okay. in, in the 1830s during the Cherokee removal. And uh, the stockade was down close to where Westmoreland Tire is now. You know, they've got the, the historic cabin site. And I, the didn't marker. Know, I didn't know yeah, that. And that, that was the grounds that the Cherokee were, were held on. But it wasn't a town then. It, it Rawlingsville was right there nearby on the north end of town, and that was the county seat for a little while. But from the 1830s to 1876, that was just a dead zone. That, that was a dead zone What when Lebanon was the county seat. Kind of like it is now. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, kind of like now. <laughs> but uh, the railroad is what built Fort Payne. And in 1876, they had the election on where to move because it was going to have to leave Lebanon because Lebanon was a good stage, st- stagecoach stop, but there was no train track anywhere around. I got you. So, you know, the, the county, the courthouse and everything had to move. It had to get on the, on the train line. And one vote kept Collinsville from being the county seat. So we're paying one by, by one vote. Okay. And that, then they built the, uh, the first Fort Payne courthouse, the, the first brick courthouse in 18, uh, 76 and 1877 and they only used it to 1890 and 1891 and then they built the second courthouse and the the actual first courthouse um the one built in the 1870s they took all of the bricks and these were all made on site bricks all those bricks were used to build what we call the odd fellas building now so if okay. you ever go to the old odd fellas building just uh what's between, the odd, no what's the odds fella odd fellas it, it was the odd fella hall you know the uh Society, the odd fellows. Okay. Like a Freemason type thing. Cut that down in here, please. And uh, it's between Grand and Gold. It's sort of wedged in between. You have to go walking around looking okay. for it to see it. But the it's a two-story building. And all of those bricks were bricks that were in the 1876 courthouse. It's crazy. Yeah. All right, cool. So it's, it's, so it's currently for sale the last time I, I looked. You know, there, it's for sale. I don't know what the price is, but if, if somebody wants to buy a historic building, look up the Oddfellas Hall in Fort Payne. Oddfellas Hall. Now I'm going to look that up because yeah. that would be something cool to have. I, mean, I don't have any money, but, but it'd be cool to have. So now I was told Fort Payne was a fort. Is that what you mean by stockade? Or no? It's not a fort. They, they call it a fort, but it's no more a fort than um, the place where Jeffrey Dahmer held his victims. Oh, God. Yeah, it, it was a place where you held hostages. Oh. But it was it was okay. You know, it did have General Winfield Scott did sign off on it. Okay. It was all legal government work, but it, it was no more a fort than Auschwitz was. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> so, so now who is the, who's the guy at the park? Who's the uh, statue at the park? Who is nobody? The... Uh, that's just a generic representation no, of, of a Confederate soldier. Are you serious? Yeah. That's not a person. It's not, a, it's not a person. Well, no. I didn't know that. I thought that was like Mr. Payne. Mm, General no, Payne. No, 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 no. That, that's just, that's just a, a Confederate. Just, it represents all Confederate soldiers. I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that statue was erected in 1913, and it used to be on Main Street, which is what people call First Street now. It was right in front of the 1891 
courthouse. Okay, I didn't know that. So when did Fort Payne start growing? You said the the the, the railroad built Fort Payne, and I, I understand yeah. that. When did it finally start having a boom? Was there any moonshiners here? Was there? There any? was moonshiners everywhere. Okay. And, and go on, uh, go on to Cab County Historical uh, Group. Okay, and just type moonshine in the search bar and uh, and dozens of articles come we, there, there was a lot of fun with moonshine back that's in those cool days. Man. but 1889 and 1890 was when the boom it was an iron ore boom it was going to be the next birmingham fort Payne was going to be the next wow. pittsburgh yeah. and of course it was all it was all just a big fake and uh what do you mean then, a big fake there wasn't anything there i mean there, there was a little oh, bit of the mean, you, yeah the ore was nothing you know you could have filled a, a few shovel full Okay. It wasn't what they said it was. They thought there was. They, or they thought there was. Okay. And, and I'm sure some people probably suspected there wasn't, but there was money to be made. And they got yeah. all these New England investors to come in. And the New England investors, they're the ones who sunk all the money. They're the reason we have the Opera House. They're oh, the reason sir. the DeKalb Hotel was built. They're the reason Union Park is there. Uh, they they put all that money into what they thought was going to be the next big Birmingham or Pittsburgh. And it was just And then it was, it was gone. Yeah. Okay. It uh, was gone. Taylor Young uh, is on here. I've known Taylor a long time. Actually. Hello, Taylor. Hey, she said, tell us what is the oldest standing building in Fort Payne? My guess would probably be the Sawyer building. I okay. think the Sawyer building was built before the opera block and everything. Now, that's my guess. I could be wrong. Now, Taylor, you let us know how that goes. Uh, she let us know. Now, Harper Brown said, Willstown was a, uh, Harper Brown said, yes, you're right on the Sawyer building. Uh, Harper Brown also said, Willstown was a Cherokee trading post as early as 1770. Fort Payne or Con Cantonment Payne was built in 1837. What's can Cantonment Payne? That was uh, the stockade I was talking about. Oh, okay, that's actually terrifying. And then when you said during the Indian, the what? what Removal. What does that mean? When the government decided that the Cherokee needed to live in Oklahoma. Oh, is that tra part of the Trail of Tears? Yeah, the Trail of Tears. Son, so we were just in that. Yeah. Just, hey, you're you're out. Mm -hmm. That's kind of crazy to me sometimes. Yeah, you got to go, they said. You Where are you at on that? Um, It, it sounds insane to me. that Because in, in school, yeah. what I mean is in school, I was told like, hey, they just where they were living wasn't great. And like, so the guy, the president at the time was like helping them get somewhere else. That's how no, I know this, this all started in the revolutionary war because the Cherokee, you know, one of the five civilized tribes, they were loyal to great Britain. Okay. And during, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm the, listening. During the revolutionary war, the Cherokee, they were loyal to great Britain. And, um, the U.S. held that against them, you know, when when independence came. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. You're, you're out of here, man. Yeah, you're out of here. We got to go. Why were they loyal to Great Britain? Because they'd had treaties with them going back into the early 1700s. Great Britain they wasn't did. messing with them. Yeah, they didn't mess with them. They traded with them. They gave them clay pipes. They, they sold them clay pipes to smoke their tobacco with. Um, they even uh, pr provide them with turbans. You know, you see the picture of uh, Sequoia with the turban on. Uh, the British gave those. They, they traded them to the, those. And the reason they wanted them to dress in turbans was so they would look like a an Indian from India, you know, a Sikh. Ah. So we, but that became part of the, of the Cherokee dress. That's just crazy to me that, that the way that was handled and the way it's taught in schools, it sounds crazy to mm -hmm. me. But it, it was rough. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it was uh, hundreds of miles of just being dragged along, people without shoes, walking, dying. And when they die, they'd kick them over in a ditch. It's awful. Yeah. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the whole situation. No. Uh, Harper Brown said we have five NPS certified trailers here, Trail of Tear sites in DeKalb County, more than anywhere else in the state. She's right. Susie Connerly said, Bill, a lot of L's. You so smart. Bill. Thank you. All right, Susie. Uh, who is Susie? Oh, uh, Susie. She's one of the actresses from uh, from the Boom Days. I mean, from the uh, Boomtown Opry. Okay, that's cool. She had to leave us uh, before the last production. She moved to Birmingham, but she she was a, a great part of the show. She uh -huh. she played my fourth wife, Tammy Lynn, <laughs> who hit me with a cake. That's rude, Susie. Not a fan of that. Mm -hmm. It so tasted good though. So you said there was a lot of moonshining going on in Fort Yeah, Man. I think that's a pretty cool uh, thing to hear about. Do you know anything on that? Right offhand, if not, not off good. top of my head, not without scrolling through my phone. I, I mean, got, I, well, I could I could find no, you I dozens you. doing that. Yeah, feel free to scroll a second, man. No, no big deal. It's but, good. Uh, yeah, there was constant raids on moonshiners. I mean, they would come out of Huntsville. They worked out of the Huntsville office over there. So the it, revenue office. What's crazy to me is that alcohol was at one point completely no go. You ain't mm -hmm. doing it. 
and then now we can just buy it anywhere. Yeah. How well, does- that's what it was like in the early days, you know, um, before the, the mid 1880s, you know, there were saloons everywhere. There were saloons in Lebanon. There were saloons all over the place. And then all of a sudden it get out. Yeah. Get out of here. That, that's wild. Hang on. I'm going to plug my computer up. Sorry. Before. Susie said you deserved it. I did. That's what she said. Um. So, but isn't it like, and now it, so they had saloons and they shut that day. Yeah, it's all gone. Okay. And then all of a sudden, uh, people are moonshining. No. Mm-hmm. And then how, like, and then finally they're like, Hey, you can, you can buy it here, but only we can sell it. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, you know, they say DeKalb is a, is a dry County, but it's, it's mostly a damp County now. It's, it's a damp County with, with a few little dry spots down in the South end. You're right. You're right. So how does that work? If it's dry, if, so I can buy alcohol in Fort Payne. Yes. But I can't buy alcohol in Sylvania no. or, or five so, or Geraldine. So what if I have alcohol at my house in Sylvania or five for Geraldine? What happens? Nothing? I think you're good unless you unless it looks like you're dealing it. You know, there uh-huh. I don't I'm I'm no <laughs> I'm no uh, expert on uh, state law. I got but you. everybody is allowed a certain amount okay. of, of alcohol in their home for their personal use. So what what was the next big boom after the or? After or what was the next? That would be big... the socks. Okay. Yeah, the, the okay. socks. I think that's an important thing to talk about. Tell me a little bit. So for a long time, we were the sock capital of the world. We were. Everyone sold out their sock companies eventually, or how does that work? Tell us. Give us. Give us the beginning to end. What you know. okay? Nineteen oh seven is when uh, the Florence Knitting Mill came and started their their operations down in the Big Mill, and they of course were out of Florence, Alabama. They were headquartered out of there, and. Uh, Everything, everything branched out from that one mill. Everything was a split off from from the big mill, from the W. B. Davis and Son hosiery mill in Fort Payne. And I actually worked at Cooper's hosiery back in '89 and uh, I think the beginning of '90. And I mean, it was unbelievably busy. We everybody here that was here then knows how how big the sock industry was. Yeah, my, I think my mom, my grandma, yeah, everybody almost everybody worked socks here. And then with NAFTA and uh, all of the the trade agreements and just, it just choked it down. It just choked, uh, I believe it was uh, Adder Holt, uh, Representative Adder Holt, that uh, was the deciding vote and just killed the whole thing. Off. What was the vote, though? What do you mean, Adder Holt? Now I've heard that name. Yeah, Adder. Yeah, he's our our representative. Oh. And and I don't have anything in front of me, but I I do know that uh, he turned tail. Oh. He, he turned tail on the area and. Uh, over a lot of people are really proud of that uh it was it was it was factory work but we mm-hmm. were the sock capital of the world when everybody sold their stuff out i mean i have to admit i have to imagine they got a pretty big chunk of change and i can't really hate on anybody for getting their money no they made a lot but th- that was like the whole area mm-hmm. so so how did things go i don't remember when that that sold out how did things happen right after that sold how was that time did things go kind of really downhill or people still working people were still doing this or that but there there were a lot of people that didn't have jobs and of course they would travel out of the area and work somewhere else so i mean it wasn't a an economic crash like the great depression but it it changed a lot it's insane to really think about that you would just smash your hometown Mm -hmm. that's wild to me um so alabama man how much did the change how much did the town change once they started kind of blowing up? We've seen the at least the video of them going through downtown riding. Did anything additional? How how did that go? Everybody talked about it. Uh, everybody was proud of them, and they, of course everybody listened to the music. And when Christmas and Dixie came out, you know, in the with the in it from Fort Payne, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that was big. Yeah, that was big. That was a big deal. Uh, Susie said, "From there, the town determined." Oh, she's talking about uh, voting on alcohol. Yeah, uh, she says meaning. From there, uh, she said each town has a vote, but the town must have a certain amount of inhabitants in order to procure said vote. Mm-hmm. Oh, she means to go wet. Yes. Yeah. She yeah. said from there, the town determines what is or isn't allowed to be sold. Mm-hmm. Some towns will only do bottle service, meaning they can open the bottle for you, but you have to bring your own stuff. Some only sell beer and wine, but don't allow liquor sales. Mm-hmm. I want to say the vote for alcohol has to have a town with a minimum of like 500 or 700 before a vote can even be brought thousand. to the table. It's 1,000. 1,000 people. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. And, and back on the Alabama thing, what I mean was is like, so Alabama was a pretty big deal. Yeah, they were. If we compare them to Dolly Parton, how big a deal are we talking they're close. Stratosphere. Well, let's let's put it in the terms of a boxing match. Yes. 
okay, uh, this is popularity, but we're going to go by boxing match rules. Yes. Um, Dolly would knock Alabama out in the third round. They would make it a little over halfway through the third okay. round. You know, they were big, but they're not Dolly Parton. Big. Okay. Do Dolly Parton is an icon like okay. Willie Nelson or Bob Dylan. And Alabama is a very, very successful group. Yes. But they're not Dolly Parton level. They're not no. Dolly Parton. Almost nobody's Dolly no. Parton level. Well, the reason I ask that is because, and this is going to seem, it's going to seem like a bitter thing that I'm saying. And I don't, I don't mean it bitter. I'm just, I don't mean it like that. And certain people want their towns to be certain ways. Yeah. Um, but when you look at Dollywood, not Dollywood, but when you look at the Smokies, mm -hmm. and, and is it Sevierville? Yeah. And all that, that turned into and all that, that grew from, was that ex almost exclusively from Dolly, right or wrong? I would say a big part of it was, right. yeah. Why didn't we get, why didn't Alabama and them and, and just the area itself try to get kind of the same? Not Maybe not as big, but, you know, maybe here's a couple water parks, you know, here's this and that. Why didn't we try to grow and kind of at least be similar to that? Because I don't think many people are vacationing here. There's got to be some. Yeah, but not like not like the Smokies. And granted, we don't want it to be like the Smokies. I wouldn't want to be around that many people all the time. Mm -hmm. But you have to imagine the economy is a little better there. No, it is. It is. Uh, it's a it's a uh, tourist trap based economy. And I, I don't know how long we could have played that on on Alabama. Alabama. I mean, I, I mean, I'm as big of a Teddy Gentry fan as anybody okay. on Earth. Yeah. You know, Ted, Teddy's the man. But but I don't think we could count on Teddy Gentry tourism to fuel our economy for the next 30 years. That's a good answer. I never thought about it like that at all. Um, if I was going to open a business here, I would want a water park. I love water parks, man. Yeah. I'd love to have a water park. It'd be so cool if I could it find would. that and just find some money to do that. Uh, Will Dooley said, should I bring a folding chair, Will Cecil? Yes. Yes, bring two. There you go, Will. Uh, one to sit down in and one for what? <laughs> <laughs> one for self-defense. <laughs> uh Harper Brown said the Hosier Museum and Hunt Hall are open Fridays 12 to 4 and Saturdays 10 to 2. This is true, and they're beautiful. Okay. She said we'll be open during boom days, and we'll be having our annual book sale. Nobody is bigger than Dolly. I don't right. think many people right. are, man. I like Dolly Barton. I got a soft spot. I got two I got two soft spots for Dolly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Susie Con Connerly said to Pins, we fighting with him, or are you going to enthrall us and use one to dance with? think she's talking to Dooley. Okay, all right. Uh, whatever works is all good. Um, so Alabama, we, we've touched on that. And that was an important question for me, yes. I feel like. Uh, and I didn't just come out with a whole bunch of questions, mm -hmm. man. I just wanted to sit down and, and talk to you and meet you and stuff. We've still got a little time. We've got a little time. Uh, just another question. Is there any – I just hit me. Is there anything? Is there anything haunted around town? Around Fort Payne? Close. Yeah, I've I've heard rumors that the opera house itself is haunted by a ghost named Sam. Oh, yeah, no way. Not that's Sam. what I've heard. His name is Sam. Now, my name is Sam. Your it's, name is Sam, yeah. Yeah, it's not Braxton. Braxton's my middle name. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. they say it's haunted by a ghost named Sam. I've never seen the ghost myself. Okay. Um, this whole county is haunted. I mean, look at the old hospital. Yeah. How many people were accidentally killed by doctors in that hospital? I went in the old hospital as a kid. I was born in it. No, no, no. As a I, baby. We snuck in. Yeah. As a kid, like we were 15, six, 15 16 years old, mm -hmm. and we were going running around in there. I'm yeah, gonna it's, it's haunted. I'm going to tell you, is it still up it, or they've done oh, it's, it's it? gone, but it doesn't yeah. matter. It's it's always going to be haunted. I don't care if they put a medical clinic there or a dollar store, it's going to be haunted. Harper Brown said yes. Dooley has seen him. Uh, so on uh, Will Dooley said witness Sam myself. So on the uh, oh, cool. on the hospital, I went yeah. into the hospital, right? We mm -hmm. were in there. Hey, baby. We went into the hospital. Me and my friends we were 16. This is a true story. Uh -huh. We went in. We were walking around, hood rat, and you know, we shouldn't have been in there, but yeah. they, they, the door was open. And we was walking around looking. All of a sudden, we're in the room with the organ. Remember the piano? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we hear, ah, and, and uh, you know, we're scared for a second. Then I hear it again. We all hear it again. And I get to looking around like where all my buddies are. And I realize one of my buddies is not in there. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, dude, not at all. You're not getting us. And I walk around the corner. He's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, you, yeah, okay, buddy. You're not getting us. And he mm -hmm. goes, what? <sighs> he looked at me in my face. I'm like, oh, it's not you at all. Yeah. So we, we get all our buddies together. We walk down the hallway. We hear it again. We're closer now. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Turn the corner. We hear it again, man. And we're right up on it. And we peek around the corner. And this door gets opened. And this guy with the whitest face I've ever seen goes. Just the whitest face. Peeks around the corner. And we hear. Rah! And we took off running, oh, yeah. son. 
my buddy, he fell down. We stumped all over him. We, we wasn't stopping to get mm-hmm. him. We helped him up, though. We got gone, man. And uh, I never went back. I don't know what it was. <laughs> you know, people do cook drugs around here yeah. it could have been someone it could have been yeah and and it could have it could have been a ghost could have been a ghost because you know there's a, ghost. A, there's a story of uh of a demonic thing that was down in the basement where the morgue used to be they said it was just a black figure with glowing oh, red eyes terrifying yeah. so i have a question um if someone was to want to do a uh, a ghost tour mm-hmm. of the uh opera house how would we do that video well, that, camera you know how would someone do you'd that you'd have to contact landmarks about that contact landmarks well, I mean, you got a, you got the hook up. I got the hook. You up. tell them we're cool. You got to message them. Hey, look, this guy's mm-hmm. cool. But my suggestion would be just to go out to where the old hospital was and just sit there to uh, spend the night. No, no, yeah. no way. Uh, no, I'm terrified. I'm scared of the dark. Mm-hmm. I don't sleep by myself. If my wife left me, uh, I'm gonna go live where she lives anyway because I'm scared of the dark. Uh, Rachel Kyle said hello. She was on here recently. Um, on the uh. Uh, on the opera house, you said your daughter works there, so yeah, she does. Uh, she did the sound for our, our uh, production down there and did a pretty good job for somebody that doesn't know what she's doing. Pretty good, or she done good? I think she did good. All I right. think she did really good. That's cool, man. Now, I'm not a sound guy. We've done this, our sound is all right, it's okay. We're in here. Mm-hmm. She's 17. Yeah, she keeps doing it. She's gonna get so much better at it, and that's what's awesome. I yeah, think. she needs more gigs. Yes, dude. Um, so how, how often do y'all have events at the opera house? Well, do it with. I can only speak for this production because there's so many more productions that I'm not oh, involved with. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought, okay, go ahead. But uh, we have done this every third Saturday. We've done, and we have one more which is coming up September the 16th at 2 p.m. Okay, and that will wrap us up for the season. Okay, so you're going to take a break until September's over. We'll take a break until spring, probably. For this production. Okay, cool. So what do you do? What What's your job? Do you, Is this all you do or what else do you do? No. Oh, you mean what do I do for work? Yeah. What do I pimp myself out? I pimp yeah. myself out as a pest control uh, technician. Oh, yeah. I, I remember yeah, that now. Yeah, I do so pest control. Where at? Morris Pest Control. Morris Pest Control. Yeah. Been best, there 27 years. Best in the area, right? Best I've ever seen. All right. You got to give them a little you sale, brother. got to give them a little bit, little bit of prop. You know, call <laughs> me. I'll, get, I'll give you a good deal. Yes, yes. So when you say pimp yourself out, I think we're kind of similar in that. What do you mean, pimp yourself out? Everybody pimps himself out. Nobody <laughs> does what they want to do unless they're a millionaire. Um, if you work at McDonald's, it's, you might want to work at McDonald's, but What's the you do it for that? money. I mean, you do it to pay your mortgage. You do it for, you, for money for your little kids. That's what that's what everybody does. Even even people that work on the Arsenal, you know, he's got a good job at the Arsenal. Yeah, he he doesn't want to be. He, at the he Arsenal. would rather be playing video games. Yeah, exactly. At home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm with that, and I wish. Uh, I heard a thing the other day that said, "There's so much natural talent trapped in poverty. Mm-hmm. So many just wonderful ideas trapped in poverty." I believe it. Because like, how how they going? Uh, how how are you gonna get your idea out? Like, well, man, I just got to keep working. Well, no, you can start a company. You can mm-hmm. start a company. No, yeah, how? Yeah. What do you mean, start a company? Yeah, man? you can do this. You can do that. That's the American dream. No, that, that's a, uh, yeah. Th- I think, so talking about the American dream, I do think the American dream used to be work hard, lace up your boots, get yeah. to work. You can have some stuff. Where do you think we're kind of at now? That's a good one, huh? We're, we're in a corporate dystopia right now. Meaning we, what? We, we really are. Okay, you... For example, you say you got somebody whose car is broken and you've got somebody who can't make their their rent or their mortgage payment. And everybody's like, well, you have to save up a little bit. You know, save. You know, how are you going to save up when everything you're making plus some, you know, goes towards something you already owe? You know, people, people get trapped like that. Yeah, people I get agree. get trapped like that. And everybody, well, everything should be uh, everything should be on a capitalist system. Well, yeah, look at our healthcare. I mean, look at the healthcare system we got right now. And and people will tell you, oh, you don't want socialized medicine like they have in 95% of the West, rest of the world. You know, you want, you want this, uh, the politicians yeah, had it you, like that. You want capital, you know, you want capitalist healthcare. Uh, no, no. I mean, we're, we're getting screwed every time we turn the around. Politi- we're paying insurance companies. Yeah. The politicians have socialist health care. They do. Huh. They do. Elaborate. What do you mean? I'm I'm super uneducated as far as what socialist health care even means. What does that mm-hmm. mean? Uh single payer health care. Um yeah, taxes are higher. Taxes are higher in Great Britain or Canada than they are here. Yeah. But nobody loses their house because they had to have a gallbladder taken out. Mm. Nobody gets put in a nursing home and their home taken away from them because they had to have heart surgery. Hmm. And or cancer. That's what I call extreme capitalism. 
things. Okay, so why do our why do our politicians get to have it like the socialist way, and we have to have it the other way? You'd have to ask them. It's kind of a weird you'd way to live. To, I feel you, like yeah, you'd, you'd have to ask them. Uh, I feel like that's a weird way to live. I do get kind of angry sometimes. Uh, some people, uh, some people have told me I'm a liberal. I don't think I'm liberal. I don't also don't think I'm a, a cold hard. Uh, what's the other way? What's the other side? Conservative. I don't think I'm full conservative. Yeah. I'd say I'm somewhere. Nah, probably not the middle because there's some crazy stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I just think I know I know for a fact I believe that if you work, you, yeah, you know, a job, you should be able to afford the very very bare necessities of life. Mm-hmm. My granddad, I tell everybody the same thing. My granddad couldn't read. Yeah, if he saw his name on paper, he had to spell it P E T E, sound it out, and then he go, "Okay, that's Pete. That's my name." Mm-hmm. Uh, he that brick house over there that you went to, that was his. He bought yeah. that with his money. Uh, and aside from that, he had two or three, four brand new cars. Dude, it ain't like that now. I can't see any scenario where mm-hmm. I can justify going and buying a brand new car in the economy right now. No. Uh, the cost of living's higher than ever. I'm going to buy a house when I buy a car. It's going to be the same cost. Well, the divide between the rich and the poor is is the worst it's ever been. So far. Yeah. I think based on the money I make, I should be middle class. Mm-hmm. I'm not at all, man. I'm so, it's not. Uh, our bills are paid. Mm-hmm. We're, we own our our double wide trailer. Very blessed to have it. We own our stuff. All our stuff's paid off. Yeah, and it's still about paycheck to paycheck, man. It is, it, and I love where I work. I mean, I, I wouldn't be there twenty seven years if yeah. I didn't love it. But um, and I love where I work. <laughs> but not all places are like that. I mean, some some places they they use the employees just like just like you'd use a wrench. Yeah, and then break it and throw it away. Oh, you can't do it. Get out. Yeah, Next. exactly. I've seen that a lot. Um. Is there anywhere in Fort Payne you think doing that? Nobody I know of. That's good. Of course, I haven't worked in Fort Payne since oh. 1990s. You know, so. Okay, yeah. So where do you do pest control? I know you do work for Morris. But oh, where... I did all of North Alabama. Oh, yeah. so you're going everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was in Muscle Shoals the day before yesterday, so I'm, oh, I'm everywhere. Okay. And uh, Fort, Fort Payne, I've never worked for a company out of Fort Payne since, since Cooper Hosiery. Oh, I okay. haven't worked for a... So are you commercial or residential? Both. Ooh, yeah. how many houses you got? A lot. <laughs> there, there's a lot. Like I said, it's all the way from here to Mississippi and a lot of uh, commercial also. Okay. So now when I was working at Cook's, I, we we had commercial and residential. Mm-hmm. It's separate. I was them. just doing residential. Now I was doing 280 houses a month. Mm-hmm. And they were like acting like I was being ungrateful and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I had a great boss. I don't want there to be any confusion. My boss at that place at Cook's Pest Control was Scott Jones. Mm-hmm. Very polite to me. Uh, he's got a soft spot for me. He would never say it, never admit it yeah. in a million years. But if he ever sees this, I know, buddy. He actually married me and my wife. He just, uh, once I get talking to people, once I meet people, I've, I've, I've got like a, God, God let me be able to talk to people good. It's easy for me to get settled in and make a friend, right? And if I'm mm-hmm. your friend, all of a sudden I'm your brother. If I'm, you know, something like that. That's how I get. And uh, he ended up developing a soft spot for me. So when I see him, you know, he's always very polite still to this day. And, but he'll make jokes like, yeah. you know, trying to get me to come back and stuff like that. And I'm just like, no. But I, I, like I said, I was doing 280 houses a month. And like they had us going down there doing meetings and stuff, you know, in Albertville. Mm-hmm. And then I'd have to come back. My route was here. Yeah. Right. Jeez, man, I don't, I don't miss it at all. Uh, speaking of pest control, you do like it though. You've yeah, I've been love there 27 it, yeah. years. 27 years. What's something crazy you see? You ain't gotta say whose house. Just what's something crazy you've seen? What's some, people don't know? People don't yeah, know, man. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. I mean, you know what it can be. Like. Yeah, but I people mean, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to even talk about. I'll that. tell you one because <laughs> I've seen some bad stuff. I'll tell you one I seen while you think one up. Okay. Uh, uh, Susie Connolly said you don't work far enough to hit the Birmingham market. No, I don't go there, Susie. <laughs> uh, Susie, she said, uh, Shannon Smith said he gets down to around Pale, Q, Pale City. I do. And uh, she said it's just a hop, skip, jump right on down the road. That's what Susie responded with. So uh, I get a phone call. Uh, uh, the way it works is you get a phone call from the ladies at the front desk, and they tell you, hey, you've got a house here to new start. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a text, but probably a phone call. No, it's a text, whatever. So I had a guy that I worked with at the time named Chad Finnerty. And uh, me and Chad, we've had some kind of falling outs here and there. And uh, I don't hate that guy. I don't wish nothing bad for him. Love his kids, right? And, and we, I think we have a good cordial relationship. Now we've just had some falling outs in life, as happens, you know? Yeah. But I don't hate him. I want him to have a good life. And uh, uh, so anyway, he was my salesperson. I was the bug killer. He was my salesperson, okay? Mm-hmm. So I get the text, hey, you've got three houses to do. 
So I call him. Hey, you know, it's about four, four, four o'clock, maybe in the evening. You know, I'm getting ready to hunker down, yeah. but I don't want to do it the next day. I got 15 houses to do that day. Mm -hmm. So I said, Hey, brother, how, uh, how bad are they? And he goes, Oh, man, they're not that bad. And I was like, oh, Okay, thanks, man. Are you sure? He goes, Positive. I'm like, Okay, sweet. So I get to the first house. It's this young lady's house. We'll never say nobody's name. Young lady's house. She's pretty. I walk into the house. Stinks like weed. Okay. Not the worst thing it could smell like. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Just, yeah. okay. Y'all smoke weed in here. No big deal. A couple of roaches. Everything is fine. Oh, thanks, Chad. That was a pretty good sale. I get to the house next door. It's a trailer. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm not judging nobody on where they live. Yard was pretty junked up. Still ain't judging them on where they live. I just noticed, hey, you've got a lot of stuff. Your grass is really high. Well, I get to the house door and uh, I knock and they say, come on in. Okay. I open the door and really roaches fell out of the window. Yeah. Pane. They just fell. And I went, no way. I go walking through the house and uh, they can just tell I'm not wanting to touch nothing. Cause this mm -hmm. is the first thing I've ever seen like this. I ain't seen no house like this. They didn't prepare us for this. I'm looking around and all of a sudden the old man, he says to me, he goes, you ain't never seen this many bugs. Have you? And I said, no, sir. <laughs> no, I ain't. Opened their pantry, walls moving. Mm -hmm. Opened a, a drawer with forks and knives. Mouse goes, yeah. And I went, hey. And it's like, no, nah, I live here. This is good, man. Craziest thing I've ever seen. I go into their uh, living room, and again, there's roaches in their pictures. There's roaches in their their couch. It's dude, it's insane. I uh, hope they're better today. Uh, anyway, uh, I look and he's got like his own cigarette roller on the table. Mm -hmm. Roaches in it. Hey, baby. Roaches in it. Roaches in the cigarette tobacco and i'm just like you're gonna yeah, smoke it and he's like roach. yeah <laughs> and uh so then uh i look in his gun cabinet roaches and the one place i thought for sure i would not see him while i was there was the bible i thought mm -hmm. i thought no ain't no way i'm gonna see him in that bible like you know because i believe god and jesus and i've heard things like you see a house burned down and the bible's still there you know all that right mm -hmm. and i open that bible man and they crawled out of the spine i yeah. took roach bait and stuck it up in there man and it was just the craziest. They had bed bugs, roaches, mice. I called Chad when I got to my car, and he'll tell you this. Hey, I love you. And he'll tell you this to this day. I cussed him like a dog. I should hang on, buddy. Okay. What are you? I shouldn't have cussed him, but I cussed him like a dog. Hang on, no. I cussed him like a dog. Next morning, I got called into Scott's office, and I got rode up. I got rode up the next morning for cussing him like that. What are you? You're going to have to go see mama if you can't stop, okay? Look, there's mama. There you go. I love you, though. Yeah, you're not going to cure that with roach bait. No. And so I, I started asking them for, like, help and stuff. Uh-huh. No, they didn't send me nobody to help, man. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, come. Like, how do y'all, how am I going to get rid of I've, it? Years ago, I've, I've been to houses that I think were held together by roaches. Oh, God. Yeah. Running around in the pictures and their books. <laughs> and the thing is, you got to be careful because they'll get in the in the in your shoes and they'll, they'll get in the cuffs of your pants, and and uh, you'll take them home. Oh with you. God, so you makes have, me you sick. Have be, you have to be careful. I can't. And bed bugs, I don't even want to talk about. No, that. They're, they're horrible. No. Now I'll tell you another funny one. My wife knows this one. I had this lady, and I think she thought that I was attractive, right? Mm -hmm. So she would text me one night at like eleven at night. She goes, "Hey, I just seen a bug," and I was just like, "You know, it's eleven o'clock at night on a Saturday. I'll see you Monday." I get over to her house and I knock and she says, come on in. And so I walk in the house and I go pest control. And she goes, I'm back here. So I walk back to where she is, her bedroom. Right. And I uh, knock on the door because the door's shut. I'm not just going to open it. And uh, she goes, come on in. And so I open the door and she goes, oh. she covered herself up. Yeah. No, she was naked when I got in there, son. She was mm -hmm. just everything out. Bigger lady. Nothing wrong with that. Just, I'm also married. Right? Mm -hmm. And I went, I can't, I, you, I mean, you knew I was here. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. And I, I left. I was just aggravated by it. But she, she messaged me a whole lot more times. And it was just, it was just strange, strange thing to deal with. Odd. But, uh, so we've had a long conversation. We've had a whole lot of stuff. Is there anything you think I missed that you'd like to touch base on? Nothing that's coming to the top of my head. I got you. So what do you got? Uh, what do you got coming up? What's the next thing? When's the next day? Oh, uh, it's going to be September the 16th and it'll be uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon rather than six. Okay. And uh, this will, this should end us up. It should end us up. Okay. It's, it's going to be, uh, going to be pretty interesting. I think it's awesome. We'll have to come yeah. out to that. How do people get tickets? 
We sell them right there in the lobby. So just to get yeah. there. Yeah, now, if you, if you there. run out, you run out. Yeah, we're not going to run out. There's no. a lot of room in there. If you sell out, you sell out. <laughs> if we sell out, we sell out. <laughs> there you go, brother. Um, so that uh, there's that. Now, how can people support the uh, all of the programs that y'all are doing? Besides from buying tickets, is there anything extra people yeah, can do go, to support? Go to, uh, go to Landmarks. Uh, go to their uh, Landmarks of DeKalb County. Uh, you can make donations. And I suggest everybody join Landmarks. It's uh, it's just $25 per year. Okay. Or you can get a lifetime membership. And uh, Harper Brown can tell you what the price of that will be if she's listening to me. Harper Brown, tell us that lifetime membership. we got a few minutes. Tell us that lifetime membership. Um, now, what is uh, what is your page again? Yours. Oh, it's DeKalb County, Alabama Historical Group. And that's on Facebook? Yeah, on Facebook. DeKalb County, Alabama Historical Group. Go follow that. There's a whole lot of interesting information. And I'll try that. to keep you entertained. I, I, what I do is I look for not only important news stories, but things that I, I think is funny. Yes, I think if something's you crazy or funny, I'm going to put it on there. Harper Brown said it's two hundred and fifty dollars for a lifetime bargain. membership. That's a bargain. Yeah, if it's twenty five dollars a month, yeah. that, all you uh, would here. have to do. Let's see how many years is that. You just have to. If you can make it past ten years, you you're covered. You've made and you've made. Yeah, money. you've made profit if you can live longer <laughs> than a decade. So. Uh, she also added a link. What I will thank do, you. That's on there. Uh, what I'll do later is after everything gets finished up is I will try to copy and paste that and put it at the top please do. and ask you about that. And I'll also try to put a link to your page to Calvin County history. Yeah, please do. I think that's important. Uh, are you doing any podcast? I'm not. No, Have no, you... I'm afraid of cameras and microphones. What about the see. daughter? Um, no, she's more shy than I am. Oh, you don't seem shy. I thought we had a great conversation. <laughs> Thank no, you. I thought we had a good conversation. I've enjoyed meeting. I've been you trying today. to get my daughter. She she's uh, learned guitar in the past year. I've, That's been, I've cool. been trying to get her to get on stage, and she's done it for the cast, but she won't do it for the public. Just playing or singing too? Or both. She does. That's both, cool. Yeah. Ooh, do, stage yeah. fright's a real thing. Why it do you is. think that is? I don't know. I have it myself. I heard. So I I do too. I have stage. I have it. I've had stage fright when I fought. I've had stage fright when I've done comedy. I've had stage fright in private time with my mm -hmm. wife. I get real stage fright, man. See the the previous show the last show we did i had to sing okay I, i've not i've not sang before ever because i can't sing except for in the second i believe it was the second second show i did just a little bit of uh tribute to teddy gentry at oh play me some mountain music. you did a little while ago too. yeah yeah that was just a little bit of that but i had to actually go out and sing a song and i froze up it was terrible scared the crap out of me but did i got it? through it yeah okay you did get it done i did get it done yeah but it was scary i mean i could have uh I could have gone to the doctor's office or in a cave full of snakes uh, and been just as comfortable yeah. as I was. So I've, I've heard people, I heard a thing said the other day, it says, you're not afraid of failing. You're afraid of failing and what people will say. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, you think they're going to know when you screw up. Yeah, dude. And it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, just doing really anything in front of people is, is scary. And uh, Denise Meadows said, after this bill, we know you should have your own podcast. Thank you, Denise. Uh, and even if you don't do a podcast, I do think it would be cool to do some videos on stuff in Fort Payne. And I really mm -hmm. do want to come out and look at the Opera House and see if I can't find a yeah, ghost. Yeah, please come down. I want to see if I come can find down. a Come ghost. to our next show. I think gonna, you'll enjoy it. I'm going to do that for sure. We'll do that. We'll bring. When is it again? One more time. It is the 16th of September at 2 o'clock p.m. Okay. At now, the Opera House. Now, me, I can't come to that one because I'm doing a thing in Gadsden that day. I'm doing a kickboxing seminar for my buddy. Uh, but other people will come and they yeah, should come. Yeah, please do. And then uh, do. if I don't come the 16th, Miss Brown, uh, I think my wife and them might be able to. But if not, yes. other people should come September 16th, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. At uh, the Opera House in Fort Payne. I am looking forward to coming. Miss Brown, you said I could talk to her about? Yeah, yeah talk, talk to her. I don't know if they allow people to prowl around for ghosts. Miss Brown. You can, you can talk to her. Can we please come and find some ghosts? Bill will vouch for me. I'm a nice guy. Mr. Potter will vouch. Now she's going to sit and she's like, will he vouch? And he's like, no, no, I'm not going to vouch for that guy. But, uh. Uh, Bill, I really have appreciated the time today. Uh, what's the what's long term goals for you, man? How old are you now? Oh God, I'm fifty two. Yeah, that. So old. yeah, just to live another decade. That's Ms. my goal. Miss Brown said yes. She said yes. Yes, that I'll live another decade. No, that we can go look for a ghost. Oh, okay. Well, Miss Brown, I appreciate that. I'm gonna get. Uh, can I get your number from Miss Potter? Yeah. No. We'll see if she says yes. If she says yes, then yes. If she says no, then uh. Message me on here or something. But just to live 10 more years? 10. Just 10 more? Oh, I'd go for 50. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind living to be 120. 
Uh, I'm gonna, she, and she said, get uh, the number from you. Miss Kyle, Rachel Kyle said, I hope you are doing well. We hope you're doing good too, Rachel. We'll see you again soon. Uh, Bill, I think it's really cool what you do. Thank you for having me on and thank you for tuning in. I know I'm not good on camera. I warned everybody. You about did that. great. Uh, I've never, uh, we've never met before. Never. So you can't have done that bad. We had a whole hour mm -hmm. conversation with no issues. Um, I think, I think what you do is cool. I Thank think you. the fact that you know so much history is cool. I think uh, the fact that we've got to meet and realize that at least some of our views are similar is very cool for me. Because mm -hmm. And ap apologies to everybody for the healthcare rant. Oh, no, I, I agreed with the healthcare rant. But uh, I think it's very cool. I think you're a very nice guy. I think your energy is good. And Thank I you. hope you have a whole ton of success and things you do and put your times toward, bud, your Thank time you. towards. Appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Yes, Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank and uh, we'll see y'all again.